Okay, my friends, this is one of my funnest things to do. And whoops, this is dipole electron flood theory. Now, Anton Petrov, nice guy, he's saying that remember the Higgs boson, which in 2012 it was touted as the biggest thing in physics, and they're still just nibbling away at it. It's 12 years now. He says it just created a problem for modern physics. Well, it created it long ago, and they just wouldn't address it, but now it's coming to the forefront. Now, let's see what he has to say, and I can tell you why they're having these problems. They're smashing huge chunks of matter like this together. Boom! And they're getting all that mess. We're smashing this together. That right there. So we're just getting the little particles. They're seeing that same pattern. If you can see that circular pattern there. But it's just a big mess of, of, of these little bits and pieces going everywhere. We don't have that. We, we have a very controlled pattern. Well, okay, my friends, this is going to be a lot of fun. This is Anton again. He's talking about physics can't explain virtually anything anymore. They realize they got all kinds of problems. They just don't know what to do. Dipole electron flood solves everything. So let's get into this. It's going to get a little bit complicated, but if you're 10 years old or have the mental capacity of a 10-year-old, I don't think you should have any, uh, any trouble. And I'm serious understanding what I'm going to present to you because I am going to show you the actual particles, not just diagrams and things and and, and I'm going to actually show you the experiments. Alright, just so you understand, these are all different particle interactions and these are the ones we did, real actual ones. This is a simulated Higgs event from CERN, CERN's Large Hadron Collider. But again, they're smashing huge particles together and they're just getting all of this debris and they have no idea what they're seeing because it's just debris. Now we did something a little different but th this was CERN, this one here is Atlas but they've seen the same things but it's just all debris again and you can see these fields and the different colors represent different energy levels and then this one here is from Fermilab but again they're just just garbage they can't see the particles. Now we actually see the particles. Right here is where our collision happens. And it separates the black from the white. Let's let's look at this carefully, all right? All right, let's let's think about what they are doing. They're slamming huge chunks of things together which they call protons and neutrons. And in my world, a proton is 1,823 times bigger than the tiny particle we're working with. Or actually it's half of that because it's, we have two of them back to back. Here's what they're doing. They're taking huge chunks like this, bam, and they, everything goes fine. It's just nothing but trash. We started with these particles right down in here. They see the same particles we see, but we started with them, so we never see anything like this. We can actually see those start up and split. And here's that interaction right here. Here it is right here. This is Fermilab's particle. They see these. They know they're there. They just don't know what, what, what about them. They know this one here has all the mass and, and um, no energy other than this little field around it. And this one has all the energy and get puffy and small. And that's exactly what we found right here with our experiments. This is real true stuff. Theirs is just little pictures. And then they see a cloud of debris, as I showed you before. But these are our actual pictures. Now don't forget, this is these two particles together, which form what they call a diarac. I'll show you that in a second. Diarac neutrino. And which consists of a muon neutrino and electron neutrino. It's a diarac two diarac neutrinos. Now we have two diarac neutrinos back to back, exactly like bar magnets. And this is the particle. And this is you can see how this one here is energetic, and this one is less energetic. This can get big and fluffy and really powerful as it pushes against everything that it has to hit against. This one is behind the black particle, so it's just dimming out. And eventually that'll get so charged up, bloop, it'll flip and that one will go to the front. And it doesn't take long. They, they 
flop around real fast. Alright, so it, my theory is dipole electrons, which means they have a, a black and a white side, or a glowy side and a black side. And the black side never changes, and this is exactly what they found at Fermi Lab. And it has a glowy edge around it, and then there's a real glowy one, and that's exactly what we found. Two of them back to back make a photon. They don't know this because all they have is little bits and pieces flying around. We show it accumulating and actually turning in. We actually show it right here in its particle phase as it is building its energy. So we can see what it is and then it divides at the venturi. And here's right at the venturi, it actually separates. You saw the black and white. It gets, in the venturi, it accelerates the light. So it gets pulled right out of its wave. You see how it's rocket shipping right out of it? This is the actual particle, right down that line. And when it hits here, there's so much reverse force that it feels like it's hitting a wall. That's why you see the, the photon actually turn into a photon here. Normally, you wouldn't see that until it bounces off the wall. All right? Normally, you won't see that photon build its energy like this. You'll see, you'll see just nothing. And then just before it hits the wall, you'll see them changing like this. And then when it hits the wall, it turns into this. Well, we've created a wall right in the middle of the air because all of this stuff is banging backwards. All right, you saw the reverse electromagnetic field, I would hope. All right, let me just show you. Here, here it is right here. You see, those, you see these fields out way out here? That's because this is going bang, 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 bang. And it, when it does, it pushes back so hard that the fields come way back here. It illuminates all the particles that were in the air, but you're never going to see them because there's just not enough impact. But now it's like pushing a wall against those particles, so then they just show up. But you would never see that, and you'd never see this one either, except it's being, being um, accelerated going forward. So it's glowing from the forward acceleration. These are glowing from the smash backwards and the in concussions everywhere. This is just a gigantic subatomic nuclear explosion. And it really is because the two particles divided and they came back together. That's fission and fusion. All right, there's, as I told you, a black and a white particle. They, they see it, but they just don't understand it. They call it a diorac. And it's really, that is an electron. Electron is a dipole. That's my theory, a dipole electron flood, because there is nothing but these particles. And at 1823, of these little dipoles, which are nothing more than magnets, nothing more than a magnet, at 1823 of them, and they're all the same size. It doesn't matter if they're green or red or blue. They're the same size, the same architecture, only they're faster spin. And when I say spin, I mean this. The particle is on the tip of the spin. All right, they spin like this. They don't flap like that. And they are particles, and the reason they have this big wave in front of them is because there's a big magnetic field surrounding. The field has to push everybody else's out of the way because everybody else has a field. So that's the particle and the spin. Now, if, if it's like this spinning that, that's blue. That's green. That's red slow and it's just more less and less impact and I can show this too which I have many many times and again the CERN and the rest of them they're just smashing things to bits and seeing a big cloud of debris as I showed with all these different fields look at this this is a mess just a, just a bunch of mess this is what we see coming out these are the Higgs fields we see those are Higgs fields baby and it looks to me like these little white strips are whacking into a black one and then they spin. And because these are spinning disks. And these white, coming through the white is just nothing but white, as I'll show you or I've shown you. Going through the venturi, there is nothing but white. The black is stepped off. 100% white, 100%, and then it turns back into black again. But right here, those white are trying to find black ones. And the reason we can only see, well, here, let me get a better shot of it. Where is a better shot? All right, here we go. This is what they see at CERN. 
is muons and electrons turning electron neutrinos and muon neutrinos together to Dirac turning into sterile muon by all by itself which is the dark matter is it really and the electron turns into a shower so it's exactly what I showed you and here it is right here so what does that mean let's break it down let's break it down that particle was coming through here. I showed you it's a, f a little four-way jobber. It's two blacks and two whites together, which makes it a stable particle. If it's an even number, in this case two, it's pretty stable. And it will bounce and it will create a color coming back at you. If there's only one of those particles, then it's unstable. Then that's an electron. Electron wants to go into something as heat or travel as electricity or go to ground. They're not stable. They don't want to be on, on their own. A, a light can go flying through here or there and it's stable until it bangs into something. If it bangs into it hard enough, you can liberate, you can ionize things, you can smash those particles to bit. And this is what we did here. This is from the Venturi. We knocked the black right off the white. So you can't go through. Venturi is very small and it's curve just like a single venturi single and the particles have to go through the black ones keep slamming the white ones through because they can squeeze they come out the black finds them the blacks are all over the place they're just laying around you can see them you see that they, they're trying to find the white and the only reason we see the black is because it's on top of the white you don't see it where there's no white you have to have the white to get in front of, uh, uh, to get behind the black, so the black obscures the white. Just hope you can understand that. Otherwise, you don't see it. You never see it like here. You're not going to see those black particles. It's, it is black, but you don't see the black particles. There's nothing there to see. The only way is to split them up, and then the, the black sits on top of the white, and then you see it. Like even here, you see this? You look very carefully. You really got to look to see. You see those little black particles? Let me home in on there. You see some little black particles there? Those are trying to jump back in with the white. That, they dig right in quick. Now, look at this one over here. You see this spritzy one? This one taken off. Now, if you look real carefully, you're going to see a little black ones trying to jump in on that. That's a really little powerhouse. And it's even the black ones are still here. Then it hits, and I believe that's what causes the spin. You see the spin there? You see the little black particles right up in here? And then right at the edge of the disc, it stops, and it keeps... Now, now, anytime you see a glow, it means that there's energy. There's some energy impact. And so this whole area here is, is all energetic. And um, it's, it's, it's hitting into all the fields that are in the air and creating all these Higgs. That's what's going on. Now, the Higgs is the recombination of the white coming back to the black. Because this is after the Venturi. The white is already separated. It's all by itself. It's kind of, the black jumps back in, then you get this. And I've shown this in many, many, many ways. Again, Rod Warren did this. Coming straight out at us. You see, here's another one. See the little spritz coming out, hitting your wham. And they're coming off all over the place. This is just the white here. There's nothing but the white. And they're starting to hit into these. This one was very interesting. I believe that is a reverse spinner. And I, I spent a lot of time on that. And here it is right here. That's that particle. And then it did this. And then it did that. And that, that's the only time I've ever seen it. And I think I understand it now. And I'll explain it to a physicist, a physicist if they would like. Now, and this is when it's really right up close, you see it? All right. And here's the little particles coming up, slamming here, and starting to spin. And that's why they have all these little bumps. I mean, it, it's it's kind of I I think I do sort of understand it, but it's uh, it's a little bit of a guess as to what's causing all those little bumpy spots. Now this one I see 
change from a regular Higgs field pinched. And it's because there's one here and one over here squishing it and shooting it out like a little squirter. And it changes the, the color because the color is the, is the intensity of the spin. It's the energy. And that's speeding up. You see, it's turning blue because it's speeding up. So blue is much, much faster than red. Much faster. There's a lot to learn about this just using a very, very simple Venturi, but it's just not expensive enough for them to take any account of. And we can, I can show you light spins. It spins just, just like I showed you before. This is, the, this is what the light is. It goes this way, you see it? It spins. It comes back this way. Sometimes it ends up going that side. Sometimes it ends up going this side. Sometimes it goes through the center. Because there's a whole, there's thousands of them coming through here. You see all those little tiny spots? They say, oh, that's just a little dot, 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 dot. No, it isn't. They are lines of separation. But if you have a double slit, it, it's, it's a whole different situation. This is a single slit, and it's a venture. So we're, we're way ahead of them, and they, uh, they don't want to engage in this because there's just not enough funding in it. This is simple. We did this for a couple of hundred bucks. We used a cell phone to take these pictures because it's CMOS, because we're only working with light. They're working with this. They couldn't use CMOS. They did, they finally did. CERN upgraded recently to put in hardened CMOS. But when I went to the University of Geneva, I said, we took all these pictures with CMOS, with a regular cell phone. They said, oh, no, no, it's impossible. You can't do that. It'll destroy the CMOS. I said, no. I said, we're using light. <laughs> They're made to see light. You guys are using bombs. You hit something with this, well, yeah, you're in trouble. But if you hit it with one of the little light particles, that's what it's made to do. It's a, to illuminate. The, this, this, it's called complementary metal oxide silicates. And it depends on what the metal is, how bouncy it is, and what color it comes back. It's, it's, it's really interesting, very interesting stuff. But light is not what we thought it was. You see how powerful the blue is? It comes through so powerful, you can't even tell there's two particles attached together until it slows down. And out here, you can finally see that there's two of them side by side, which is, we can see very easily the green and the blue. You see the green. But the green's really fast compared, I mean, the, the green and the red. The green is very fast compared to the red. The red is very slow. And we've had these go through the same venture at the same time. You can see a huge difference in the speed and the in concussion and the glow and everything else. Now, this is my claim. There is nothing other than these two particles exist, the white one and the black one. That's it. The two of them together, when they recombine, they show up as a Higgs boson, yes. Now, CERN and the rest of them say, no, this decays to these. No, these are already decayed coming back to this. This is the normal configuration. There's a Higgs boson, which is these particles attached together. That's what goes spinning off, as I showed you. These two together make a gluon, which is the black and the white. Two gluons make a photon. That's it. The rest is just all different variations and different energy levels of the neutrons and stuff. I mean, of the neutrinos and stuff like that. It's just inconsequential. The only thing that matters is the black and the white. That's all it matters. This is it. That's, the, that's the, all there is. <laughs> Everything's made of that. And as you start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you start adding more and more and more of those particles. So let's take hydrogen. I show this so many times. Where did my, oh, here's my hydrogen right here. Hydrogen is not one big, gigantic positive like this and one tiny, 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 almost nothing electron. That's just not what it is. It's 1825 or so little particles like this, each one of them being one of these Dirac's. And they're just in a ball. And if you slam those together, yeah, you're going to get all this kind of stuff. But the core of everything that's made is these, this particular particle here. And sometimes, though, they'll come out, when you see this happen, 
The reason you see that is because they, they, they don't get smashed into every single bit coming apart of every other single bit. You get like a chunk here, they call it an X particle, it's just a big bomber. And then you get something crazy looking like that and hisses into little bits and pieces. These are the smallest pieces they see. And we see them because we're at these small, we're already starting with that small piece. We don't have to see all this big stuff and dig through it. And this is what they do to, to create electron showers, which is the cat's meow. Electron showers is what you want because they create billions to trillions of electron volts. And you can tell because of the luminosity. Luminosity is energy. That, my friends, is luminosity. That's energy. It started out here, you couldn't even see it. It was dark. Up in here, they got the same ones. They got a ton of these. You see them up here? They're doing the same thing this is doing, only they're just not hitting anything hard. This is causing... <laughs> and if you put just a zillion of these little little um, venturis and collect it from behind, something like this I'll show you in a second but you shoot your laser through the black can't get through the white gets through and you collect it here and you can have banks of them just banks and banks of them and collect just that white and that white has no weight whatsoever and it runs cars or anything you want it to run it's electricity all right so here we go back to Anton again now don't forget look very carefully at that pattern you can see it you see the circles around that? They see these and they say, oh, those are Higgs fields. Well, they're just nothing but a big blip of all kinds of debris. And again, we see the Higgs fields, but we see them as individual fields showing up as individual particles of light, literally, is what they are. We started with light, so, you know, they're light. Light is, is, is about as close to the most elemental particle there is. And again, here's light right here. This is light. No question whatsoever. Came out of a pulsed red laser. This is the tiniest particles that CERN and Fermilab can find, which is the exact same particles. They just don't realize they're, they're the smallest particles that exist, and they all add together only in these configurations. When they see these other particles, they're just globs of those particles added together. So, again, I showed them in green, I showed them in red. You can pretty much see them in blue, too, but the green and the red are no problem. Um, and again, they just show them as a big pile of stuff that comes out of these huge explosions. And they want to get to the smallest particle there is, so why not start? as close to that as you can get, which is what we did. All right, this is where it gets to be fun. You know that I am a material scientist. I do, I do material things. I don't just speculate about this or that if I have no way to prove it. Now, I have a Crookes radiometer here. We're going to be using that, using lasers and different light sources and so forth different colored lasers and see how it affects this and then we're going to be working with the hot and the cold and all of that because I, I do now I'm almost 100% sure I understand why the Crookes radiometer works and nobody has been able to figure that out for 150 years it's strictly speculation and they not one of them that I can find has the, has the idea why it works the way it works and I'll tell you why it works the way it works right now. Because of the glass. <laughs> Nobody even takes that into consideration. I never even heard anybody ever talk about the glass. They're always talking about the light and this and that and thermo this and blah, blah, blah. Well, it, it does relate to thermal transpiration. I don't disagree with that, but I disagree with their interpretation of how that happens. All right, so here we go, back to Anton. According to many different articles I read approximately 12 years ago. But, as I've clarified in previous videos, and we'll actually do this again in this video, that's not entirely correct. Although the reason I wanted to start with this boson is because something really important was once again just discovered about this unusual particle, and that discovery seems to be a little bit more important. It might suggest that there is some kind of a misunderstanding with the current model of physics, and there might be evidence for what's known as supersymmetry, 
The idea that might actually explain a lot of problems in physics, including dark matter. But I guess, let's take baby steps. So, hold on, full person. This is Anton. Today we're going to discuss Higgs boson once again, and I actually wanted to relate this to the previous video that you might want to explore about this as well, because they are kind of connected. All of the relevant videos are in the description below. But first, I guess a brief reminder about what this unusual particle is, and what it means for physics. And so, in essence, the way to understand this particle is by imagining everything around us, or basically the entire universe, as a kind of a collection of different fields. Now, to make this easier, we're going to imagine this as a two-dimensional field. And every time these fields become excited by something, or basically they produce a kind of a wave, this results in one of the fundamental particles that then form all of the matter around us. And according to modern physics, there are quite a lot of these fields that are each responsible for different types of particles, and some of them are able to interact with one another, whereas others seem to be more or less individual. And so... Okay, here's where I'm going to jump in now. He's going to start talking about these different particles. And don't forget, there's only two. There's the W and the Z boson. That's the only ones that exist. Those are the only two that exist. Two of them together make a gluon. Two gluons together make a photon. When the two split and they come back together, they make the Higgs. The, the Higgs doesn't cascade down into everything else. These come together to make the Higgs. The Higgs is the primary particle which is stuck together as, as light, basically. Higgs, Higgs is not what they think. All right, I showed you what the Higgs is, and well, I'll show you again, but here's what he's saying. There's another whereas others seem to be more or less individual particles, which they're not. They're all made from the W and Z bosons. So basically, for every single subatomic particle, there is an equivalent field that explains how these particles form. Any kind of an excitation in each of these fields produces individual particles. And one of these fields is known as the Higgs field. This is what Peter Higgs predicted back in the 60s. And he basically tried to explain that some of the mass in certain particles is actually formed when they interact with this unusual Higgs field, which basically acts as a kind of a, well, I guess, molasses. This is one of the better explanations I've heard before, and is usually the one used in textbooks. I couldn't find a video for molasses, but here's a video of honey. So basically here, as various types of particles interact with this very unusually gooey field, the field starts to produce its own particles because of the interaction, which are now referred to as Higgs bosons. But they're extremely unstable and disappear in a fraction of a second. Alright, I showed you those, just to make sure that you remember what the Higgs fields look like. Here they are, right here. Alright, these are the Higgs fields. And they do, they, they come and they go right away because they're just reattaching from being exploded. And that's what they're seeing in these super colliders, but they don't realize, they think it's the other way around, where these decay into the, the white and the black. It's the other way around. So when the white and the black come back together, they create the Higgs. And we can squirt these out all day long. Look at this one. I got Higgs on steroids around here somewhere. Look at this one. <laughs> Rod Warren did these experiments and, and spent years and years. I worked with him, it got to be five, six years. And um, just fabulous, fabulous results. And, um, and I have literally hundreds of these pictures of d different interactions, and of all kinds of different interactions. So anyway, we're, these are the, what I'm showing you is a reality. I'm not showing you something that is just drawing you know these are all like drawings i don't think this is real either i very much doubt it um and of course obviously that's not real but that's that's the kind of stuff they're putting out because it, 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 oops they just have a big pile of stuff happening at once we have a very very specific interaction with one literal particle coming down here turning into a very strong particle and creating fission when it broke apart here and fusion when it came back together. So for us, as far as I'm concerned, the Higgs field is fusion. All right, it's when the Higgs, the two W and the Z come apart and then when they come back together, that's fusion. When, normally they're together, so that's just the normal. They're never going to be apart. They're either going to be electrons when they're together, which we would call a gluon, 
or they're going to be photons when there's two of them back to back, or they're going to be in molecules. That's it. That's the only. But every one of them is made of these. All right. So if they come apart for some reason, which they do, when they come back together, that's when you see the Higgs. And that's my opinion of it. I could be wrong. I'd love to talk to somebody about it. I think I have more information here than they do. All right, because again, we're working with light. We started where you should have started, as far as I'm concerned. All right, now this is where it's going to get real fun. The Crookes radiometer, they're clueless. They have no idea why it works the way it works. And I think I do. And I am going to present my evidence as to why it works the way it works. Now, this is going to take some time to do. We've got to use the lasers, we've got to use normal light, we've got to use all kinds of things. We've got to use temperature because it is related to temperature. You can make that thing spin just with warming it up. And you can make it spin backwards just by cooling it down. Why is that? Why would that happen? And these are these black and white veins. You see the little veins inside there? One side's black, one side's white, and it's low pressure. So that means, like, say you have a certain amount of pressure in this room. This is a vacuum tube. <laughs> they suck everything out of it, and then they seal it. So there's no, pr there's no lot of particles in there. So inside here, there's just a few particles floating around. Outside here, it's pretty dense. You don't see it, but it is dense with particles. Gases in the air and so forth. They're very dense compared to what's inside there. But there has to be something in there or it doesn't work either. If there's too much like outside pressure here, same pressure, it won't work. If there's too little pressure in there, there's no particles in there, it doesn't work, e work either. So you have to have a certain amount of the same particles basically as you have out here in there. And then it will work. And then it works because of light. All right, different types of light. And I'll show you that. And then it works because of different temperatures. And I'll show you that. So let's, uh, I don't know if I should do it today. I think I should spend a whole nother, another video on that because it could, it could, this could get a little time consuming. Because it, what we need to understand is the electromagnetic spectrum. And these speed of particles, how fast they move, and how the, the waves are not really waves, they're the spin. And when you have a really tight spin, really, really tight like this, psh, you're right down here where you're really in a tight spinning race, and you literally lose all the electrons. You end up with just the dark particles down here. These will kill you. And this, this ultraviolet will burn you. And then you get into x-rays and gamma rays, which will kill you. Now, at a certain point in the ultraviolet, here you have the normal black and white particles. You have these here. All right, you see that? Down here, that's what's spinning. And then, well, radio waves and noise and all that is just... It's just particles sort of banging around, spinning, but not fast enough. When they get faster and faster, they go into the microwaves. And that's, you don't see microwaves, but they'll cook your food because they shake the molecules in the water. And then infrared is just like it's warm, and you see a, like a glow, but it's just not really any light to speak of. Then you get an invisible spectrum, where it's really kind of starting to spin fast. Then you get up in the ultraviolet, which is, that'll burn you. But guess what? If you're, if you're right there, you get a sunburn. But guess what? You could be right there and have a piece of glass in front of you and you won't get the sunburn. That's why I say it's a glass. I'm gonna, I'll prove it, it's a glass. Now, once you get past the ultraviolet, you get to a point where this, the ultraviolet is so fast and it's spinning so fast, this is that you lose all the electrons. And all you have is the dark particles. It's called the ultraviolet catastrophe. 
and the temperature goes up, 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 and it, boom, it just drops like a rock because you don't have any more of the glowy particles left. It goes up, 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 boom. That's the catastrophe. It just goes boom, right down to nothing. And then all you have is the dark particles. Those are the damaging particles. So I intend to speak about that too. As long as you have both the black and the white, it's more or less of a bouncer. Once you just get the black ones that spin it so fast that there's nothing left, the white ones are all thrown off, and you just get the black ones, then, then you got damage. All right, here's Anton again. I'm going to let him speak a little further here, and he's talking about new okay, developments. So let's talk about this recent study and some of the recent discoveries. And this is once again from pretty much similar experiments from the facilities like CERN in Switzerland that basically hosts the world's largest particle collider. And so here, the researchers behind the study in a description collected a lot of data between approximately 2015 and 2018, mostly focusing on trying to discover if there are other additional appearances and disappearances of this unusual particle that could maybe teach us something else. And one of the reasons they want to do this is because Higgs boson, when it basically creates that mass from interacting with other particles, it only exists for a tiny fraction of a second and then decays into something else but it seems to decay into different things at all times. Sometimes into gluons, W bosons, Z bosons, photons, leptons, and basically a bunch of other stuff. And that's of course based on the theoretical predictions. But one of the rarest types of... Uh, before he continues on to the rarest, he just said the Higgs boson decays into that other stuff. I showed you the Higgs boson is a product of the the reassembly of the black and the white. That's what the Higgs boson is. I, I think I've shown that pretty clearly. Now let's see what he has to say about this other part. All right, don't forget, here's what he's talking about, the Higgs boson decaying into these other things. No, the Higgs boson is a pr product of these coming back together. All these other things that he says it decays into are just other bits and pieces. Listen, listen to him very carefully. This is ultra important that you understand the, the, what the, the take is here. All right, listen very carefully. He says sometimes they go, they decay into gluons, W bosons, Z bosons, photons, leptons. He's, well, let me back it up so we don't miss this. All right, here it goes. Nothing else, but it seems to decay into different things at all times. Sometimes into gluons, W bosons, Z bosons, photons, leptons, and basically a bunch of other stuff. And that's, of course, based on the theoretical predictions. But what Basically, what they're seeing is all these other things, and then they end up turning into Higgs bosons, and then they flick off instantaneously because they've reattached and become a particle again. They're just, see they're just seeing it so briefly, they don't know what they're seeing. One of the rarest types of decay predicted by scientists would result in the production of a photon and a Z boson. An intriguing particle that's sort of responsible for some of the weak force. And that's exactly what I showed you, is the boson, and, well, let's, let's go back to it. I don't want you to miss this. All right. Radical predictions. But one of the rarest types of decay, predicted by scientists, would result in the production of a photon and a Z boson. An All right, a photon, which they think is the white big particle that gets really bright, and the Z boson is the black particle, which is exactly what I've shown you. And they say it's the rarest. I can make that happen all day long. A particle that's sort of responsible for some of the weak force. And according to the predictions, this should happen 15 times every 10,000 decays, making this basically the rarest type of decay. But that's th th that's because they don't know how to make them decay. I showed you those two particles coming apart, the black and the white, in scads. Turns out when they measured everything, it was over two times higher, 34 times every 10,000 decays, with a standard deviation of 3.4, which doesn't actually prove this to be super correct yet, but does present us with a new mystery. The mystery being that there might be a problem with modern predictions, and more importantly, the standard model seems to be lacking something, especially when it comes to explaining certain types of bosons. But I guess even more intriguingly, for some physicists studying other types of models, it potentially hints at what's known as supersymmetry. The idea of existence of even more particles, symmetrical particles, 
that we still have not discovered with quite a <laughs> See, that's the thing. Well, well, now we know we got to do this. Now we know we got to do that. I'm showing you those particles. He says this is the, the most, the, the, to, to decay, well, <laughs> they just got it totally backwards. Right here, I got them decaying into scads of decay. Right here, the, the, the black one is getting away from the white one. Normally they're attached together as, as light particles. And they're attached together like here too. But when they slam them, they just see all the debris. We're forcing them through the venturi and making them separate and seeing them. Because you can see the black sitting on top of the white. Otherwise you'd never see it. You don't see any black on here. You know, this black one's all over the place. You can see them just barely here because they're obstructing the white. And here you can see them very plainly because they're sitting right on top of the white. Otherwise, you don't see them. They don't emit, they don't absorb, they don't reflect, they don't do anything. But if they're, behind, if they're on top of the white, then you can see them. They're never, ever, 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 ever going to be on top of the white. The black is always on the inside. The black is always on the inside. It's coated with the white. That's why we've never seen it before. But that gives everything weight. The white gives everything the glow. It gives them energy. And the weight comes from the black, which is always encased in white. The only time you can really see the black and the white is like we can here. And we see them coming in as photons. All right, there's, here they are. The same particles they see at CERN and Fermilab. No difference whatsoever. Even the glow around it. You see the glow? But it's fixed. It never changes. That one gets big and small. And here's the glow. Same glow. Same glow. And these get bigger or smaller. Just shown, there's no question what I've shown you is what the reality is. And we have done the rarest of all events is to show these two particles separated, which they, and I agree, you're not going to see this normally. They're never going to see this or understand it until they get down to where we have with the Venturi. There's the only way to do it. And you have to start with light. You start with all these big particles, you just get a mess. Plus, this is, you can't walk around with this. With the thing I'm talking about, you should be able to walk around with a little lunchbox and, and power your car or your house or anything. I mean, it's it's unbelievable amount of energy coming out of there. It just scads because these are electron showers. Those are in the billions to trillions of electron volts. This is all you need is white to run everything and it has no weight whatsoever. You take your car, it weighs 4,000 pounds, you drive 500 miles, charge it back up away, still weighs 4,000 pounds. No change whatsoever. Electricity, which is the white, has no weight. The black has all the weight. The black has all the weight. And they say that too. Fermilab says the same thing. It has all the weight and it's a fixed particle. And this is an abstract particle. It's virtually nothing. I think I showed that. Here's their point particle article point particle article and here it is it's, it's, that's the particle and they say it's all oh, it, leptons and quarks and bosons and all this stuff in the standard model standard model doesn't even know how gravity works you drop something they can't even tell you why it, it goes to the ground they have no idea they don't know what heat is they don't know what light is as I've shown you I'm showing you the particles they still don't know whether it's a particle or a wave is both because the particle has a magnetic field surrounding it so the particle creates the wave which I have shown quite clearly right here raw air all right there's a particle right in here and it has a wave surrounding it so everybody else's fields which they have waves surrounding them too they got to get out of the way, so they start to glow. This one glows like crazy and pushes through. So we see a wave, but it's driven by a particle. And then I can show you that particle pulling itself right out of the wave. There's the particle now accelerating faster and faster and faster. And then it, it concusses with itself. All right, because there's so much stack up against here, it can't get through. 
So it, it's, now it's concussing against itself. That's why you have this, and it's literally, and I mean it's 100% seriously, this is a subatomic nuclear bomb. All right, listen to me carefully. Subatomic, not not atoms. Subatoms, smaller than atoms, which is light. This is light. It's a subatomic. Nuclear means they're bits and pieces of a nucleus. That's because you just have to make enough of them to get to a nucleus. So it's nuclear, subatomic nuclear explosion. When you divide something. That's an explosion. It comes back together. So what is that? That's fission, which is the explosion. That's fusion. So we created fission and fusion on top of all the rest of the stuff. And there it is right there. Fission, fusion. In the middle, raw energy. That is, that is the cat's meow. That's what they're looking for, is this right here to create this. This is what you create when you do electrical generation. You rip the white. You rip the white away from the black. That's all you do. You push the white down. It has no weight whatsoever. And it's exactly here. Hold on. I'll let Fermilab say what's going on here. In summary, the extended particle, which is the black one, has a fixed size. It has a fuzzy edge. But the point-like particle is the glowy one. Our mathematical abstractions with zero size have no weight whatsoever. And that's true. I agree. It says even zero size particles have an extended effect because of the field. I, I agree with exactly what he's saying, but I don't agree with the standard model. And, um, and I, I say this is dark matter. And this is, is electricity. This is elect electricity. And if you can rip that away, which we did, only by using the Venturi. We used a, a mechanical separator. They hit things head on so hard that they push all the bits and pieces apart. Well, that's worthless. We pushed it in so that it's slapping. The black keeps slapping the white, squirting it through here. So we want to harvest it right there. That's what we need to do. Okay. They're showing right here, electron showers it's going through the Venturi, very low energy, coming out extremely higher energy, lower energy, high energy electrons. The muons don't go through, the black, they stay on this side. Just like I'm showing, the, uh, coming through, it starts out not a whole lot of energy, but once they start to really start cascading here, you get a whole lot of energy, just like I showed you. Now, we need to harvest it right there with some kind of a device that absorbs that energy and shoots it down into a battery or whatever, and carry something around just like this, which would be just like a lunchbox. And you can select any kind of voltage, any kind of frequency, whatever, AC, DC, USB, yada, 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 and have all these plugs in it and just carry it around. Once you turn it on, it's going to create more energy than it uses. That's what's called free energy. And I, I, should, I, I don't see how it could possibly not do that. Once you see a huge increase in luminosity, that means you have a huge increase in energy. Luminosity is energy. If you don't see an increase from here to there, I don't know where you're looking. All right, luminosity is energy. And they're right now gearing up for the high luminosity LHC. I don't know, I, I thought I saw something about that. Because I went to University of Geneva for, for uh, particle physics. I didn't go there, I went online. And I talked to them about all our stuff. And um, I think I might have swayed them to, to go into the CMOS because I showed them. I said, you, we can see this. We're not interfering. They, they, they were using either charge coupled devices or blasting something into it to look at it. And they would say, oh, it's a user effect, user observation effect. If you observe it, it changes it. No, it doesn't. If you put something in there that absorbs energy, yes. If you force energy into it, yes. One of them is a charged couple device, the other one is a forced into device. But we just sit back here and we accept what comes out of there. That's what the beauty of CMOS, and they realized it, and they did, they converted to CMOS.
All right, I'm just going to let Anton finish. He's, he's just saying nobody understands it yet. He's right. They don't understand it because they will not listen to me. It's maybe just a little bit scary as well. Anyway, at least for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. In conclusion, there's basically some kind of a new, unexplained discovery in regards to Higgs boson, and nobody really knows what it is just yet. Once we know more, I'll come back and talk more about this. Until then, thank you for watching. Subscribe. Share this with someone. I want to know more, Anton. I, I keep trying to get a hold of them. So if anybody can get a hold of them, that'd be great. I leave messages. I, I, I left one on here 16 hours ago. And I, I mean, I, I know that I'm blocked almost everywhere. So I can't point at fingers and say, oh, he never talks to me. But nobody ever talks to me. So I, I, I don't think I ever get through to anybody because I've been put on some kind of a whack job list and, and the same thing with my emails and so forth. They go out as spam. And uh, I don't think I get through to people. And I, I don't think so because I just don't ever get any responses. And like things like this, I have things to offer, but um, you gotta get heard. And I can't get, can't get heard. So anyway, that's just my complaining again, but I, I don't know why the things I'm showing are not resonating. You know, I have my followers like you guys are watching. Yeah, that's great. But it's not going to a wider audience. Why? I don't know. So anyway, we'll hope for the best. Anyway, I, the, the next video is going to be a lot of fun. That is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> I can't wait to do that. All right. I love you all. We'll talk.